ever heard about a culinary discipline called molecular gastronomy? No? Well, you're in for a treat. Imagine a realm where the boundaries of science and cuisine blur, where your dinner plate becomes a canvas of chemical reactions and physical transformations. Welcome to the world of molecular gastronomy. It's the vibrant intersection of food science and culinary arts, a place where chefs turn into scientists, and your dining experience becomes a sensory exploration. Here, culinary traditions meet cutting-edge technology, and the result? Exquisitely crafted dishes that surprise and delight, challenging your perception of what food can be. Think of spheres that burst open to release a river of flavor, or foams that melt into a cloud of taste on your tongue. Intriguing, isn't it? Well, that's just a taste of what molecular gastronomy has to offer. So buckle up as we're about to embark on a fascinating journey into the world of molecular gastronomy. Okay, so what exactly is molecular gastronomy? Let's break it down. Molecular gastronomy is a subdiscipline of food science that explores the physical and chemical transformations of ingredients when we cook. It's essentially the science of deliciousness, where culinary art meets hard science. The aim? To understand why certain cooking techniques work and to create new methods of making food taste and look more interesting. Imagine this. You're in your high school science lab, but instead of test tubes and Bunsen burners, you're surrounded by pots, pans, and a stove. That's molecular gastronomy in a nutshell. It's about applying scientific principles to the culinary arts. The principles of physics and chemistry are fundamental to this innovative culinary field. For instance, the Maillard reaction, a chemical reaction between amino acids and reducing sugars, is responsible for the browning of food during cooking. This reaction gives grilled steak its distinctive flavor and golden brown color. Emulsification, another scientific principle, is used to mix oil and vinegar into a smooth salad dressing. It's all about understanding how different food molecules interact with one another and how heat, cold, and other cooking methods affect those interactions. Now, molecular gastronomy isn't just a fancy term for cooking. It's a whole new way of looking at food. Renowned chefs like Heston Blumenthal and Farron Adria have embraced this science, creating mind-blowing dishes that play with our perceptions of taste and texture. Think of Blumenthal's famous bacon and egg ice cream or Adria's olive oil bonbons. These chefs are like culinary chemists, using their knowledge of food science to push the boundaries of what's possible in the kitchen. But it's not just about creating out-of-this-world dishes. Molecular gastronomy also aims to improve the taste and nutritional value of everyday food. It's about making food healthier, tastier, and more exciting. In other words, molecular gastronomy is where your high school science lab meets your kitchen. Now, you're probably wondering how do chefs create these amazing dishes? Well, the magic of molecular gastronomy lies in its techniques and tools. Let's take spherification, for instance. It's a process that involves the transformation of liquids into spheres, creating a burst of flavor when bitten into. Imagine a delicate sphere of mango juice that explodes in your mouth, unleashing a tropical symphony. The key player here is sodium alginate, a substance derived from seaweed, which reacts with calcium to form a gel-like skin around the liquid. Next up, we have gelification. This technique turns liquids into gels, allowing chefs to present familiar flavors in unfamiliar forms. Picture a solid cocktail or a jiggly tomato soup. All of this is possible thanks to gelling agents such as agar agar, a plant-based gelatin derived from algae. But it's not all about gels and spheres. Enter liquid nitrogen, a super cool tool that can flash freeze food in seconds. With liquid nitrogen, you can create frozen meringue kisses that melt in your mouth or a scoop of ice cream that's formed right before your eyes. It's food theater at its finest. So how do these techniques change the physical properties of food? Well, by altering texture and form, they can completely transform our eating experience. A liquid can become a solid, a solid can become a foam. It's not just about taste, it's about touch, sight, even sound. This is where science becomes art, where eating becomes an experience, where food transcends its humble origins to become something truly extraordinary. And it's not just about the fancy techniques, the humble pressure cooker, the sous vide machine, even the common whisk all play their part in this culinary symphony. It's about understanding the science behind each tool and using that knowledge to push the boundaries of what's possible in the kitchen. With these techniques, chefs can literally play with our perceptions of different foods. Let's explore some examples of dishes created using molecular gastronomy. Imagine biting into a cloud of mango, the fruity sweetness enveloping your taste buds in an airy embrace. This is not your typical fruit dessert, but a creation of molecular gastronomy known as mango foam. 
The science behind this delightful dish involves a process called foaming, where a natural gelling agent like agar-agar is mixed with mango puree. The mixture is then whipped to incorporate air, resulting in a light ethereal foam that captures the essence of the fruit in a completely new texture. Now, let's move on to something a bit more savory. Olive oil powder. Yes, you heard it right, a powder made from olive oil. This intriguing transformation is achieved using a technique called spherification, specifically reverse spherification. The process involves mixing olive oil with maltodextrin, a starch that absorbs the oil and changes its state from liquid to solid. The powder melts in your mouth, releasing the rich flavor of olive oil in a surprising and delightful way. Another fascinating dish to consider is a cocktail, but not just any cocktail. This one is a mojito encapsulated in a sphere that bursts in your mouth, releasing a concentrated burst of minty, citrusy, rum-infused goodness. This is another example of spherification, where a liquid is transformed into a solid sphere that holds its shape until you take a bite. Or how about a dessert that's a visual illusion? A strawberry that isn't a strawberry at all, but a delicate sphere filled with strawberry puree and cream, created using a technique known as freeze-drying. The process involves freezing the puree and then reducing the surrounding pressure to allow the frozen water in the material to sublime directly from the solid phase to the gas phase. From airy foams to surprising powders, bursting spheres to deceptive visuals, molecular gastronomy dishes take us on a culinary journey like no other. These dishes are not only a feast for the taste buds but also for the eyes. Intrigued by molecular gastronomy? You can try it at home. Indeed, the world of molecular gastronomy isn't confined to high-end restaurants or food labs. With a little curiosity and creativity, you can bring this culinary science right into your own kitchen. You might be wondering where to start. Well, let's break it down. Firstly, familiarize yourself with the basics. Understand the core concepts, the science behind the magic, if you will. There are plenty of resources available online that can guide you through the journey from the comfort of your home. Next, let's talk tools. Just as an artist needs a brush, a molecular gastronomist needs the right equipment. Some techniques require specific tools such as a spherification kit or a culinary whipper for foams. Don't fret though, many of these tools are available online and they're an investment that will open up a new world of culinary creativity. Ingredients are the next big thing. Many molecular gastronomy recipes call for ingredients that might not be in your everyday pantry, like sodium alginate, calcium lactate, or soy lecithin. These might sound intimidating, but they're just tools of the trade, and they're easier to find than you might think. Now let's talk about recipes. Starting with simple recipes is a good way to dip your toes into the world of molecular gastronomy. How about a balsamic vinegar pearl or a mango foam to start with? Once you're comfortable, you can start experimenting, creating your own recipes, and pushing the boundaries. Lastly, remember to have fun with it. Molecular gastronomy is as much about the process as it is about the final result. It's about experimenting, failing, learning, and ultimately creating something unique and delicious. Remember, cooking is an art, and with molecular gastronomy, you're the artist. So get out there, bring science into your kitchen, and let your culinary creativity run wild. So, we've taken a whirlwind tour of the fascinating world of molecular gastronomy. We've explored its definition as an innovative culinary field, where science and cooking intersect to create unique dining experiences. We've delved into the techniques used in molecular gastronomy, like spherification, which transforms liquids into edible spheres, or foaming, which creates light, airy textures. We've also seen examples of dishes that showcase the magic of molecular gastronomy, like balsamic vinegar pearls or olive oil powders. We've even shared some tips for those of you who wish to experiment with molecular gastronomy at home, using everyday kitchen tools. This journey has been about more than just food. It's been about understanding science's role in creating flavors and textures we love. It's been about reimagining what cooking can be. And most importantly, it's been about realizing that cooking isn't just an art, it's a science too. Next time you're in the kitchen, remember you're not just a cook, you're a food scientist. If you enjoyed this journey into the world of molecular gastronomy, we have a small favor to ask. If you found this video informative, interesting, or just plain fun, go ahead and hit that like button. It helps us reach more food science enthusiasts like you. And if you want to continue exploring the intersection of cooking and science with us, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way, you'll never miss out on our future adventures in the kitchen lab. 
Remember, every like and subscribe helps us bring more delicious science to you. So until next time, keep cooking, keep experimenting, and stay curious.